Superman of science, and he loves to play with fire. And the things you do, you can do, if you so desire. Do try this at home with Mr. G. Hello and welcome back to Do Try This at Home. Do Try This at Home is the show that takes ordinary household items and turns them into something extraordinary. I'm your host, Mr. G, and today on Do Try This at Home, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna be playing a little bit with fire. There we go. Um, you're going to need, for today's little experiment, you're going to need an old metal coat hanger, like this one. Something that's not too thick. This one's very thick. Um, something that's pretty bendable. Thinner is better in that case, but this one's thick so that you can see it well on camera. Um, I'm not going to be bending this one. I'll show you the shape that you need to bend it into here in a moment. You're going to be needing some copper wire. This is about perfect. This just came out of some antenna down lead that I had lying around, and the center conductor of that is about perfect. So if you've got some old antenna wire and can strip it, you can have some copper wire that you're going to need. You're going to need a length of copper wire that's about Oh, I don't know, two feet would probably be plenty. Um, you're going to need a couple of magnets, just a plain old ferrite magnet's fine. And you're going to need a neodymium magnet, but it can be very small. This one's actually a little bit too large for this experiment. The smaller the neodymium magnet, the better, because it'll actually work better than what mine is going to work to do this experiment. But we'll get by with this one for now. Whoops. They stick together. They don't stick together that hard. Neodymium magnet and, ferrous, and ferrite magnets don't really stick all that hard together, it seems like. Um, you're also going to need something to use as a spacer. I'm going to use a stack of quarters. I don't know how many I'll need, but that's to set my candle on to get it up to a certain height. I want the flame to be up at a certain height for this experiment. So just something that you can adjust. Quarters make a nice spacer for a small little candle like this. And you're going to need a candle Something that's short, like this candle. You don't want a real tall candle. You want something that's real short, like one of these tea light candles. Okay. I think it's time to get started with today's experiment. What we're going to be making today is we're going to be making a heat engine. That's right. Pierre Curie discovered a long time ago, a scientist that messed around with magnets and heat. And he discovered that when this magnet gets hot or when a metal that's magnetic gets very hot, they are no longer magnetic. They lose their magnetic properties when they get hot. So, I found that neodymium magnets lose their properties at a fairly low temperature too. Probably about three to 400 degrees is what I'm going to uh, assume for this experiment for this particular magnet. So that's not real high. Certain other metals like iron need to be heated to seven, 800 degrees before they'll lose their magnetic properties. So in order to be able to use a candle, we will need some form of neodymium magnet. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your copper wire and you're gonna build a cradle for your neodymium magnet like I've done here. All I did was wrap some copper wire, like this piece, around my neodymium magnet, like so and I let the end stick out a little bit so that it made a nice cradle. And this makes a pendulum. I've now got the top of the wire bent so it can hang over something. What's it gonna hang over? Well, I fashioned out of a coat hanger this neat little device here that allows my wire to hang. And how do I want my wire to hang? Well, I want it to hang like this. I want it to actually hang so that my magnet gets attracted to the other magnet there. So it, when it swings, boop, it goes right against it. So it swings back, it wants to go against it. Swings back, wants to go against it. This is the adjustment that you need. So I put my ferrite or ferrous, yeah, ferrite magnet, I taped it here in a little rounded end of the coat hanger. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see exactly how we did this. See, I taped it right there in that type of a bend. So you can see how that's taped in there. Nothing fancy. Nothing really is at all fancy about today's experiment. But it works, and it's really cool. So now watch, here's how it's gonna work. I decided I'm gonna use a couple of quarters. I'll try two here to start with. Let me see where that brings the flame. Now I don't want the flame touching my this magnet. What I want is I want this magnet to actually touch the flame, or the flame to be very close to it. 
So let's see if we can do that. Now, the magic's gonna start here, hopefully. Actually, I'll bring that up just one more quarter. All right, now that everything's in place and adjusted up just right, as our candle heats the magnet, the neodymium magnet, it starts to lose magnetism. And there you go, it drops away. It starts to swing because it's no longer attracted to our ferrite magnet over here. Now, what's gonna happen next? What makes this a, a heat engine? Is it just gonna come to a stop and the whole thing's over with? No. As the magnet cools, ah, it gets powerful enough again to attract to the other magnet. And what's it do? It pulls itself into the, into the path of the flame of the candle, which then heats it up again and starts the process over. Any second now, there we go. Drops away, starting the whole process over. Yep, a Pierre Curie heat engine. Very amazing, and this little guy will run for as long as you have the candle underneath it. It's not gonna stop until that candle is out. Some people say, wow, it's like perpetual motion, but we all know perpetual motion really doesn't exist because you always have to put energy into the system in order to make the movement. What's our energy source here? It's the candle, and here it goes again. It's gonna heat up, the energy is being expended in the candle, heating up the uh, neodymium magnet. When it gets hot enough, it says, I can't hold on any longer. It starts to swing again. Very, very cool. Here, I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can take a better look at exactly what's going on here. Okay, the candle is heating up the neodymium magnet, and when it gets to a certain temperature, usually it's between three and 400 degrees for neodymium magnets, now, if you have a lighter neodymium magnet, it'll actually work better. It'll actually heat quicker and actually release quicker. And you may get it so that it just operates in one cycle. It heats, drops, cools, goes back and gets magnetic again, and heats again, drops, and just does one, one swing. I kind of prefer this one, though. I like the pendulum effect where it swings and swings, and then until oh, it gets, the magnet gets powerful again because it's cooling, and it gets attracted to the other magnet. As the candle flame heats the magnet up, it's in the pendulum there, it says, ah, I can't hold on any longer, and it releases and starts the whole process over again. Should release any second now. There we go. There you have it. The Pierre Curie heat engine. Okay, I need to tell you a couple things before you go try this little experiment. That neodymium magnet and the copper wire that's holding it gets very, very hot indeed. After all, we're playing with fire here, people. So, don't get burned, all right? What you're gonna definitely wanna do is you're gonna, when you turn this thing off by taking the heat source away, the candle away, you're gonna wanna give that magnet a lot of time to cool before you go touching it. I didn't, and I burned my thumb. Not good. So anyways, I hope everybody had a great time right here today on Do Try This at Home. I hope you give this little experiment a try. It's really simple and it's really cool too because the thing just keeps going and going and it's like the Energizer Bunny. It just keeps going and going and going. Anyways, I hope you had a great time and I'm Mr. G. I'll see you right here next time on Do Try This at Home. with stuff. Let's start it with things to do instead of just a blank table. I don't know what made me start that. That was just stupid. Ow! Holy crap! That magnet's freaking hot still! Dang it! Oh boy. Not good.